this is going to be my review of this year's Kenwood DPX 300U. This would be one of Kenwood's one of two uh, double dent in dash head units. This model here would be their middle of the road, and I say middle of the road because Kenwood, from what I can see, kind of just said the heck with the entry level because nobody's buying it. And again, price points even in um, you know marginally higher price retail outlets, you could find this unit for the around 159 and change price range. So again, that's not even a middle of the road price. So they have this model, the 300U. They also have a 500 BT, which I'm also going to be featuring a review on as well, which essentially is very much like what you're going to see here in this video today, just with the exception of the under unit is going to be a little bit piece of a step up with the Bluetooth built right into it. So like I always do, I leave the units in demo mode. I'm going to let that uh, go close up while I'm in the back bickering and talking about everything I do like and dislike about the units. But I also like to show everybody in today's world, because a lot of times you can't go out and get all touchy feeling in the store to see what you're going to get if you're considering purchasing one. This is what you can expect to get. You got your head unit, of course. They have two double dent shrimp rings, and I really, I, I will be getting into depth on this because this is actually something that, believe it or not, I actually was excited to see. That's one of the two. There's another right here. The remote control, the box, manual, removal keys, and a double dent sleeve with locks on the side, which is what you use the key for, of course, to remove it. And the isolated screw down so you can mount it. So they give you two choices. So if you're going to use it in a factory application, use that trim ring up there. This one here, if you're going to do a surface mount from the outside, just cut a hole and put it in, which is very nice. Very nice, classy touch. Good job on that one, Kenwood. Now, let me just remove this super quick. Uh, we're going to get into a close-up, but not quite just yet. What I wanted to talk about is the size. Standard double dent, 4-inch height. Seven and a quarter inch on the depth. This unit weighs next to nothing. Unbelievable how far and more advanced every year, year after year, they become just so much more or less mechanical. It's, it's, it's really, I mean, if you haven't, you know, well, I mean, of course, this is what I do, so I see them every day and every year. It just gets more and more amazing to me, uh, just like how a child grows is to a parent. But this unit just weighs literally a quarter of what they used to weigh, not only only at three years ago. The heat sink, this piece here, this piece of aluminum, which is, again, it just goes to show you how little you even need them anymore. So, very very efficient. That's something to really say about Kenwood. Kenwood's technology is growing. It is improving. It's not staying stagnant like you might find in some manufacturers. So, again, very good for Kenwood. Now, again, like I was saying, for the price point, Three sets of preamp outputs, front, rear, and dedicated subwoofer for preamp outputs. Awesome. For a guy who's creating a full audio system, nothing short of amazing. Uh, wiring harness, if you are replacing a Kenwood with this new Kenwood, no need to get excited. Standard 16-pin harness, just unplug yours, plug yours right back in. Nothing to talk about here. Now, on the bottom right there, you're going to see a very small little round plug. What that plug is, is for the Sirius XM tuner, which would be the model V200. One plug, run the antenna, very straightforward, have your satellite radio in a jiffy. Lots of mounting applications, lots of holes for anybody to get it in, out, up, down, any way you're going to ever want this thing in your dash, you have it. So, now we'll get a little more of a close-up look at this unit. Alright, so at this point, I'm going to let this unit kind of roll through its little... Demo mode so that way you can enjoy getting a good visualization, visualization of what you can expect to get should you go out and choose to buy one of these. And also, this remote control, which is the RCO405, uh, same as it was last year, except they have these two buttons here, which the green and red are for calling. This model is non Bluetooth equipped, so that doesn't apply, but this same remote would be for the 500BT, and I guess they just did that because it's a little bit easier on the factory to create one remote for two units as opposed to making an extra one. I can understand that. So, in case you were wondering what's up with that, that's really all there is to it. So, moving right along, this unit here, um, although, like every radio in the world, says it's 50 watts by 4, of course, we all know that that's not the truth, because my reviews are nothing but blunt the truth. This unit, you can expect 22 watts RMS per channel, times 4, like most Kenwoods and most units out there in the world. Um, the power bandwidth, which is 20 hertz to 20,000 kilohertz, nothing exciting there. Um, as I covered before, the preamp outputs, this is a six channel. It has a full six channel outputs. No auxiliary 
inputs for the RCA, by the way, folks. Um, front, rear, dedicated subwoofer, preamp outputs. The rears are not switchable. You cannot create them for auxiliary or input or any of that stuff. The preamp output voltage on the RCA channels is 2.5 volts. As you can see, the display color, which is changing right there as we're, as we're working through this, this, um, this video, is changing. So it is variable. You can set it to whatever color you want it to use to match your vehicle's interior, of course, like most of these units these days. The EQ bands, which I'm going to touch on and show you actually in hands-on, uh, you got three bands, the wireless remote, which is the RC405, which I showed you already. The unit steering wheel compatible, there is an adapter required. Uh, I got that information from the internet, that is incorrect. So forget that. If you want that feature, look at the review for the 500BT. Don't waste your time on this one. Now, your auxiliary inputs. Although there's no RCA based ones in the rear, I don't think that that's such a big deal. And the reason why it's not a big deal is because RCA is analog. Everything these days is, is about USB, flash drives, iPods, Androids, Bluetooth. It's got to be something like that. Right there in the front, they have a USB jack and a 3.5 millimeter for your audio video input. USB, so if you're using a flash drive, jump drive, uh, any, you know, no-name type of music storage system, that's where it's going to go. It's right in the front. Um, now, again, this is going to be slightly different to the other model, the 500BT. Um, so... That's something I can say, for me, I personally do not like about that. I've had a radio myself where it took the uh, iPod cable in the front, and I really didn't like it. I don't like wires hanging off my radio. I don't like them in my dash. I just don't like the looks of it. It looks messy, unprofessional, but that's just me. Um, so keep that in mind. That's my take on it. I'm sure most people will agree with it. I'm sure it would be one idiot out there that will say, oh, yeah, you know, take it easy. It's only a $160 radio. Well, you know what? That's what I say. You can do whatever you want. Um, now let's talk about some of the other stuff. Satellite radio, yes. Sirius XM, which I showed you in the back, which will take the V200 tuner. Um, HD radio, nope. Um, iPod compatibility, of course. This will take anything from a classic all the way up to a fifth generation. A nano, anything from first to seventh generation, one through fifth on a touch. Uh, mini, it will not accept. An iPhone, it will take everything from a two gig or 2G, I'm sorry, to an iPhone 5, which I haven't even seen yet. FM sensitivity is very good, 9.3. European tuning, yes, oddly enough, this is not just a US-based uh, tuner. This one you could also use in Europe, so that's a very big selling feature for this unit. I can see that that's going to be a good chunk of their sales this year, just for that one reason. Uh, Seek scan, no big deal, of course it does. RDS, which is another big feature, doesn't necessarily... You wouldn't expect it, but this unit does offer it, and it is built in. So RDS, if you're not familiar with RDS, it's a radio data system. What that is is when you have different sources on the input, it will give you more information on the LCD to, to tell you what's going on. All right, so moving along. This unit does have text scroll feature built right into it. It's got three different modes. It can do auto, once, or off altogether, so if you don't even want to see it. Um... Music search, so you can look through your MP3s, AACs, Window Media's file, just by scrolling through your, your tracks on your head unit's rotary knob, which is this unit here, of course, which you can push and you can turn, which is nice. Most people would like this knob. It appeals because it's just a cool-looking chrome shiny knob, so for most younger people would like it, but older guys love this kind of stuff. And I can't say, you know, I'm for it against it. I'm neutral. I, I, I think it's okay. Um, playback modes, playback modes. Um, it'll do track, file, and folder for your basic non-iPod Android type of, you know, deals. Um, last position memory, which is this. When you turn a unit off, it'll go directly back to that mode, whether it be a CD, a USB drive, what, where it was playing, uh, the time in the CD, or a USB source. Wherever it was that it left off, this unit will do that, which is pretty cool. Now, you also have an auto off eject so even if the unit is off you could still hit this eject button so if the yellow wire is powered up the key was off you could hit this button still take your disc out while the vehicle is actually in the off position so that's pretty cool we like that and it also has this feature which is unique to Kenwood Kenwood has a lot of PC applications going on this year and going forward which is music editor so that way you can use your Windows 7 Vista XP home edition, professional, whatever it is, and you can take all your music files and actually sort them out with the application, and that's going to apply mostly to people that are using non-Android or Apple 
products or just USB or jump drives because, you know, not to discount them, there's nothing wrong with them. Um, but it's nice to have a feature and a company that actually give you some piece of free software which can work to, together with them. So that's cool. Now, this unit, of course, has an AM FM tuner plus a Pandora and iHeart and as well as Sirius XM radio tuner all built in. Plus, on, to on top of that, it has a RDS feature. So let's just slow it down. AM FM, straightforward enough. That's nothing exciting there. You, of course, you're going to have your 18 presets for FM, 6 on AM. The Pandora is an application you would get directly from Pandora itself, and you would control it and see all the information right on the head, head unit itself. As for the other one, which is the iHeart, it's a Kenwood app. You would go to the Kenwood site, get the app, and it will work in conjunction with your phone to do all the same features, just much more robustly. So that's pretty cool. That's something you're going to have to just see for yourself. I'm not going to go into all that because that's, that, I think, would be its own video with nothing nothing more to say. Sirius XM ready. Um, I hope that by this time in your life you've seen Sirius XM. I mean, it's the best. I mean, it's, it's awesome. This unit, fully digitally compatible with it. So... Besides the RCAs, the outputs, the power, um, of course this unit is going to have a, a front and rear high pass audio filter, sub control, low pass filter, subwoofer phasing control, dedicated subwoofer level outputs, and it's going to have the EQ which I'm going to go into and I'm going to show you how it works exactly. Uh, bass boost, loudness feature, a volume offset for different modes so you can have, say if your AM or FM is a little bit lower than your satellite radio, you can tune that in, adjust it so that way no one goes into shock switching from one source to the other. It has a built-in dimmer. It also has a um, illumination wire, so that way when you get in your vehicle and you turn your car on at night and your lights come on, the illumination will dim along with it, so that way it won't be irritating for your eyes. As I covered, it's a full two-din size, which is designed for either just a god-awful huge hole for a custom installation or replacing a double din, which in, in a factory dash is, is what this would use, be used for. And that's pretty much the end of that. I mean, I think it's time to uh, turn this unit on, get it out of demo mode, and show you the rest of the stuff in person. So let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to interact with this unit just a little bit. But before I do so, I just wanted to show you quickly. This here is an iPod cable that I grabbed from our warehouse. Of course, this one here goes to my iPod or iPhone. And over here, you got the 3.5 millimeter, and you have the USB. This here is actually a Pioneer. It's a CDIU 50V, a KSU 29 from JVC, and... Kenwood calls it a KCA IP 102, I think. I mean, it's all the same shit. Boom. There you go. I mean, you don't have to be, you know, too crazy about this stuff. Any of those cables all work. It's just a way for these manufacturers to just sell you a lot of, whole lot of stuff that you just could save money on if you knew what it was from some other manufacturer. So there's a there's a tip. Um, now, let's get this thing out of demo already. When you hit your source, you get USB, auxiliary, which is down here because there's nothing in the rear. A little door to keep the dust out. Um, standby mode, your regular AM FM tuner. Everything's laid out very well. Station, station changing up down as well for presets that are just actually looking. I have no antenna connected to it, so that's why it's freaking out and just doing that. This I'm going to get into because this is a little bit more detailed audio and function controls. This here is your back button, kind of like how it is um, on a tablet. Say if you're in a screen, you just want to get the hell out of there, go back. That's how you do it. This search button is used typically for when you're searching on your Android or iPhone for music. Or if you're also using the uh, the apps. The apps I'm not going to get into on this video because it'll just take too darn long. I'm not going to do it. Source we already showed you. These here are your preset buttons, laid out very nice. Lots of colors, easy to find, everything at night time. Eject button right here. Down at the bottom, there's your search button, A through Z, and your iPod dedicated button. Play pause right here, display, so when you're actually using your iPod or Android on this, change your text very quickly at a touch of a button. The rotary encoder knob turns, as well as it's a push-in type of dealie. So if you wanted to get into your audio controls, per se, there's your subwoofer control. Say you wanted to turn it up, you would push this knob in, subwoofer level, just like that. Plus and minus 15, very straightforward. Hit it again to get out. And just keep moving as your base level, mid, 
treble. That's all you can find. That's all you're gonna find as far as the audio controls in this unit. It's a little bit lacky on that stuff. But for the point price point and what this unit does, I just presume that the person buying it is not gonna care a whole lot anyway. EQ Pro, EQ Pro, what that is is I don't think I'd call it pro, but you know, whatever. Bass adjust. Um this is just going to give you kind of like a parametric EQ, so that way you can change out your frequencies to some extent. You know, there's all your frequencies. In the book it explains it and kind of like how it all works and lays out. I'm not going to give you a tutorial on how this works right now because that's just too much. But you have your, uh, your mid, your level, the back button to get out. Treble, adjust, there's your level, turn it up, turn it down, that's your meat and potatoes treble, treble level, but if you wanted to get out of there and get into your adjust, you hit the back button, there's your frequency adjustments, and this is going to emphasize whatever frequency it's tuned at, so if it's 10k, you know, for that more brash stuff, if you really want to get the high sizzly stuff, you turn it up there, right around there. So it's nice. It's a nice little feature. Nothing crazy, but nice. Attentu attentuator, which is no big deal. It's just mute in English. So your audio, bass, mid, treble. Then you have the frequencies, which is specific to the low, mid, and high frequencies. EQ Pro, which is where those things are located, and also, you know, it has a bass enhancer. Preset EQ, which of course is factory stuff, nobody really wants that. Bass Boost, which is going to give you more bass at a lower volume level, and you would not use this at higher volumes because it would just be a distortion box. Loudness, Balance, Fader, Subwoofer Set, you get in there, it's on, that's cool. to show you something else. Balance, fader, subwoofer set, detailed settings. This here is for HPF is for high pass filters. Low pass filter for your subwoofer. So that would just be full range. And this will range from the highest point, 160 hertz. The lowest will go is 85 hertz. I think they could have done better and give you a better a little bit better of a low pass filter myself. For somebody who has a tuned subwoofer box, say if they tuned to 40, 44 hertz, something like that, you'll never get it. But, you know, hey, what are you going to do? Subwoofer phasing, so you can have it normal or reverse, which is pretty useless. I mean, who puts their woofers backwards anymore? Volume offset for different modes, so you can have everything level. And when you're back where you, where you were, if you were to just get right out of there and hold the same button, you would get into the function menu. Function menu, demo mode, your settings, this would be for, you know, how it appears, how it looks, how it, how it you know, is customized to your likings. So you have the seeking mode, auto memory, model search, all this kind of stuff, clocks, the colors and displays and keys and stuff. Nothing too crazy. I mean, all in all, I mean, very easy to use. You really don't even need to use the book very much to even understand how to use this book. Anybody who's had experience with using a stereo, to, to very small extents even, would actually understand how to use it. So it's a very friendly, easy to use radio, in my opinion. And I like it. I think it's a whole lot better than it used to be. I think that they could still work a little bit more on, on the ease of use for the EQ settings for most people. But, however, it is Kenwood, and that's just how Kenwood rolls. So there you have it. There's my review on the DPX-300U.